In this video, you will learn how to build a React Native application for iOS and Android, including API calls to Rapid API, including how to build a drawer navigation, and including a meme creator. What's up, Samonics, and welcome back to a big new tutorial about building a React Native application. And welcome to everyone new, my name is Simon. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build a great meme creator with React Native for iOS and Android. And we're gonna start with a completely blank application. We're actually gonna follow with Expo in the beginning, which is a way to build your React Native applications a bit faster in the beginning. However, in the end, we're also gonna eject Expo and see how we can take our application from there. Along the way, we will integrate React Navigation to build a drawer navigation so we can bring in a little side menu and to navigate around in the application. We're gonna use native base UI components for the UI of our application. And we'll also use Rapid API APIs for the meme functionality so we can get some trending memes and also to create our own memes. Rapid API is also sponsoring this video so you can check out all the great APIs of Rapid API. There are tons of APIs and I just picked two of them because integrating more and more APIs is just so easy with Rapid API. Simply create your account and you get access to thousands of APIs that you can directly find. So go check it out, create your account, support this channel by creating one. As always, you can find all the links below this video, links to the Rapid API, the APIs used in this video and also to GitHub where you can find the full code of our meme creator. Now, before you forget about it, make sure you hit the like button and stay subscribed so you get notified about all the upcoming videos in the future, no matter if it is React, React Native, Angular, Capacitor, Flutter. There are tons of tutorials coming in the next time about building great cross-platform applications and web applications and you should definitely be subscribed and also there will be Thursday live stream. Make sure you stay subscribed and now let's dive right into our application. Alright, let's start our fun by creating a new React Native application. And I'm just gonna use Expo, so we're gonna use npx create Expo app. Now, if you haven't worked with React Native before, uh, you can either use directly the React Native CLI or the new kind of way is to use Expo Go. There are different pros and cons for both sides, but like the biggest thing for Expo is that it gets you running uh, really quickly and you don't need to work a lot with your environment. However, if you've worked with your uh, environment if uh, with native uh, Android and iOS before, you can of course also use it, but let's for the fun do it like this because then we can also in the end see how we can actually eject uh, Expo again from our project. So basically get the benefits of Expo in the beginning and then in the end we're gonna have the benefit of being free from it. So npx create Expo app, give it a name, I'm gonna call this meme creator and I'm also going to use the template uh, for TypeScript. So that is the Expo template blank TypeScript, right like this. Uh, with that template, we get TypeScript integration in our project. And I think TypeScript has become really important and we all should use it in our React applications um, or basically in all kinds of JavaScript applications. Now, with that in place, let's wait while this is finished. We can already take a look at what we're gonna add to our project as well. Actually, that was pretty fast. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that fast. Well, well, well. That means we can already open our Visual Studio Code Editor. And the first thing I'm gonna recommend today, besides one, two, three, four, besides uh, zooming in four times, is the Rapid API extension. So you can search this under extensions, search for Rapid, and then you should probably already see it there. Hey, come on, there it was already, Rapid API client. This is the client that I currently use to test my APIs. Here it is in action, uh, let's see. And the cool thing is, it is pretty much like Insomnia or Postman, but directly integrated into Visual Studio Code. So when I go to this, I actually <clears throat> still see, I think, do I still see? Uh, well, if you zoom in four times, it's probably a bit hard, but usually you still see the response of your calls in here. Uh, you can set up environments, um, just like you can install it, Postman, and then just define the headers, the query, the body of your calls, and just do it in here. 
So probably, yeah, if I zoom out a bit, it looks a bit better. So here we have the site to define your API call and then here we got the result. Now the cool thing is that this is just directly integrated in Visual Studio. So I can now just go ahead and blah, 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 work with my application and we see still the tab is up here and I can immediately go back, uh, oh, it was this URL and this is the response I can use it. So this is what I really uh, enjoyed about using the uh, Rapid API extension. So just search for Rapid API, it's the Rapid API client. Okay, but for now we have more urgent work to do and I think what did our command line tell us? We can run npm run iOS and npm run web. We will actually do the iOS, so let's do npm run iOS. I think we're not on the zoom level you are used to, so let's zoom into this and there we go. All right. This already brings up my iPhone preview. Where are we gonna put this, left or right? I would really love to get your opinion about this right now in this moment. I just assume I'm gonna put it to the right hand side because there's my face anyway and if it's covering a bit of the device, well, that's not too big of an issue. Also, we don't really need to see the area up there and then can we make this a bit bigger? Oh yeah, we can. Of course we can. So this is now starting the Expo application. In fact, I still in here, uh, do I still need to tell you this? Uh, I can type just I to open the iOS simulator. I think it's still installing this. So now it's bundling our application and then in a matter of just seconds, we should see our app. There it is. This is pretty cool about Expo and I'm just now gonna make this a bit smaller and put this back so we see everything. Um, because we can now directly start working on our application. So I can dive into the app TSX. Um, I'm gonna give this a bit more space and change this to let's go. And it will immediately change. So we got live reload on this simulator. I could also deploy it to my physical device or an Android emulator or an Android device. It would work the same. Because what is this? Oh, there was the wrong command. I uh, just want to go home. Because this installed the Expo Go application and also you have seen probably the QR code. You could scan this with your device and then it would just show up your application. Now, if I press something like Command D, we get the development tools in here. Of course, they're not bundled with a final application, but we now get the chance to reload our application, copy a link, uh, go home, which brings us here to this interface of Expo Go, and then we can dive back into the app. Uh, you can also get this by shaking a physical device, as far as I know. Uh, so this is our way to currently run the application. We could also run it on the web um, by pressing W. However, uh, first of all, we will have to install the Expo Webpack whatever. And then secondly, um, we're gonna have a problem with the UI library in the end. So for, maybe let me, for fun, let's do this. Maybe let's run npx expo install for the Webpack config. Um, by the way, if we run expo install, it just makes sure that the npm package we installed works with our expo SDK version. So there's no magic to expo install. Um, you could also pretty much run npm install in here. You would just probably sometimes get a package that's not working uh, with uh, Expo. Okay, let's try this again. Can I do this again? If I now press W, it opens up this preview. And do we see something? Yeah, we see let's go as well. <laughs> so if we wanted to, we could actually now have a web preview uh, as well of our React Native application, which is pretty cool. However, again, in the end, I think it's ultimately not gonna work in our case uh, as we're gonna use a different library for our UI. Okay, where do we start? Probably with some, um, probably we start disconnected from Metro. I don't think you are disconnected. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think we're gonna start with the app routing. So what we wanna implement is an app draw, um, and this can be used from the React Navigation Package. Routing and navigation for Expo and React Native applications. We're gonna try it. No, we're actually gonna read the docs. Um, and what we're gonna look up for is the installation. So first of all, we need the React Navigation Native Package. So let's install this. React navigation slash native. 
Next, we also need to run uh, this uh, expo install. Again, it could also be npm install. React Native Screens and React Native Safe Area Context. This is important to make sure that our application uh, treats those safe areas at the top and bottom correctly on iOS and Android. Um, and then we are, no, we don't need to do this. We don't need to update our pod dependencies. This is actually the cool thing about uh, Expo as well. The only thing we need to do is wrap our application in a navigation container. We're going to do this in a second, but first I'm going to bring it to the draw navigation because this is what we wanted to implement. And for this, we also need to install more packages. So we need to run the gesture handler and the React Native reanimated. Okay, packages, packages, packages. I have a list, I have a long list of packages we need to install, but I'll try that we just do this in the beginning. Um, to make sure this works, we also need to import the React Native gesture handler. Uh, we're just gonna put this at the top of our app TSX. There should be a safe place for this. Uh, does our application still work? I don't know, we can always type R to make a reload. Um, yeah, I think probably, <clears throat> probably we should do a little, oh yeah, I know what this is. <laughs> I've seen all the errors while I'm preparing the code for this. So in order to make sure that the React Native uh, reanimated plugin, which we see this is some issue regarding reanimated works, we have to go into the Babel config and add another block with plugins. And in those plugins, we have to add React Native reanimated plugin. Uh, detected a change, restart the server to see that you may, okay, you may need to clear the bundler with clear flag. Let's hope it works just like this. Let's do npm run iOS. <clears throat> it's bundling the application again, and voila, the application works again, nice. We haven't made any progress on our navigation, but we have installed the packages. So that's actually a big win for us. Now, the last package we need for the draw navigation is actually the draw itself. Didn't we install this before? Like, okay, yeah, we missed this line. NPM install the React navigation draw. Let's go here. Um, I'm gonna probably, yeah, link below to a GitHub repository as well, uh, where we got all the commands or all, you can also see all the packages used. That's gonna make life for you a bit easier. Now, back to our app TSX, and I think we can pretty much close this. So, to create a draw, the only thing we need, let's copy, just copy the snippet for fun. Um, let's bring it into our app TSX. So, this is how it looks. We create our drawer navigation. Um, so all of this is the drawer navigation. And then we define the different screens of the drawer. It's actually really that easy. Uh, however, if you want to customize it, of course, there's a bit more to it, but this is like the beginning. Also, to actually use all of this, we're gonna change our app. So let's remove the styles here. Um, we can comment this out. We can actually leave the rest in here. Um, Leave it like this. And for our export default app, what we're gonna change is we first of all uh, surround everything with the safe area provider to make sure we follow uh, the safe areas here. And then include the navigation container. So this is uh, the package from our React navigation uh, that needs to surround the rest of our application to make the draw actually work. Now I can actually copy this in and add a draw navigation. However, we don't have those uh, components, so let's create a new folder and call this components, components. Okay, I'm gonna add, what kind of components do we need? Um, we need the home screen dot TSX, and we need the about screen dot TSX, so those will be complete screens. And then we're gonna have the creator screen TSX as well. Uh, I think we can live with those three for now. So for the about screen, um, do we have anything in here? Uh, what was the, uh, my snippet, Ionic, uh, no, not Ionic, React functional component. Um, export, D uh, I don't like it. <laughs> 
Uh, can we do this? Ah, uh, whatever. Const about screen. I don't know, I definitely had a snippet for this in the past. Uh, if you have some, just use them. Um, and then export default about screen. Actually, we could do this differently. We can talk about export default and if it is good or bad, but well, for now, let's just keep it as it is. Uh, and then we're gonna probably just do like a view. I don't know, something from React Native and a text. And then tell this is the about screen. Yeah, you can import. Hello, just do the import. Text is available there. Okay, this is my. This is actually the about screen. Then we have the creator screen. Creator screen. Creator. Creator screen. And then we finally also have the home screen. Um, just making sure that we got some dummy files in place because then we can actually implement our draw already. So let's get rid of the stuff we had in here and let's change this. So we don't have the status bar anymore, that's cool. Um, so the first draw screen is probably our home screen and it should use the home, com no, the home screen, not the home component. Then we also got the creator screen. So let's call this creator and creator screen. And finally, we got a third one, which is about and the about screen. So let's hit save. And boom, we got our application. Because uh, the um, React Navigation package actually does quite a lot to our application. So we got this draw. I can actually draw this in or I can also click on it. And by default, it looks pretty good, I have to admit. Um, we haven't defined any kind of menu, that's just done automatically, but we're gonna see a different way uh, how to do this in a second as well. And we can actually navigate. We have titles about, we have those screens, and like we've worked for probably 10 minutes and we already got the drawer implemented. This is pretty cool and something I definitely uh, in highly enjoyed about um, this package. So the ease of using this package was super, super easy. However, if we now want to make this, well, how do I say, mm, more interesting, more custom, um, we're going to probably define a custom view for this. And if we do a custom view, we probably don't want to stick to the React Native stuff we have, but install another package for our UI. And this is where I selected for this tutorial native base. So if we check out the stars, uh, 18k stars for native base. It's comparable to Chakra UI. I think Chakra is also very popular. Um, however, these are universal components and I hope uh, in, the pa in the future this will also work nicely on the web. Hey, you can say you got 80k plus. Um, so yeah, in theory, they should also look nice on the web in the future. And they actually do, I think. So let's do this and let's add native base to our project. Uh, therefore, we go to the installation guide, and of course, <laughs> these days you need an installation. Hello. Oh, I'm, I'm sometimes too fast for Arc, and then just nothing works anymore. Uh, hello. Hello, Arc, my old friend. Um, I've come to talk with you again. How? Why can't I click on anything? Arc, please, just go do something. I don't need the. UTM source. Oh, damn. Okay, installation. We got to install in an expo project. You could also install in React Native, Next.js, or, well, any other project. And we can run expo init. You can actually initialize your project with it. We, I don't want to do this. I have an existing project. So I'm also using, like, the, all these settings, web. You do you have this or that? Existing, new, yarn or npm. And soon we're going to have bun and uh, something else as environment. Now, anyway, uh, let's don't rant too much about this today. And install, install the native base package. Additionally, we need two more commands. Thanks for making this in two separate lines. So I have more to type and to paste into my uh, terminal. This sometimes... Uh, brings up a few issues about uh, legacy peer dependencies because I'm right now on uh, React Native uh, 69 and React 18. And some packages have problems with React 18. Um, I hope this one will work. Yeah, you see a few warnings. But let's, let's 
brace ourselves and hope that this works. You use local CLI, okay. And there we go, everything is installed. And once again, we need to wrap everything in our application with the native base provider, um, pretty much like we did with the navigation container. So now, besides that, uh, I'm just gonna put it around everything else. Native base provider, and then, do you get this automatic import? No, of course not, why should you? There we go. Uh, we don't really need a box component in here. We just need the native base provider. Uh, yeah, it has no closing tag. I, I know. I see this. Okay. Everything is wrapped in it. Let's check if it works. Uh, how can we check if it works? Mm, we can probably just go to our about screen and change this to, let's say we're using a heading. Um, I don't know why it's not, um, when I close this, uh, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, so let's go to the about screen. Yeah, this certainly looks like it works. I could also probably use a box in here um, or make this center, a center element. And it is centered and I could probably also wrap it inside a container to give it a bit more padding here and there. Uh, well, container actually, no. I thought container had automatically some kind of padding. Anyway, doesn't matter. It means uh, that our native base package is actually installed, which is good news for us. Because what we wanna do now is not touch those files, but actually prepare a more sophisticated uh, UI for our navigation. And also probably use different colors, but we're gonna talk about those different colors in a second. Now, what we're gonna do is um, we can first of all change a bit those drawer screens. So right now we see they are taking on the name that we given to them. However, we could also supply an options object. And within those options, we could, for example, <laughs> no, uh, we could change the title. For example, for the home screen, we could use the title uh, meme generator, just a random and then it immediately changes to meme generator up here. We could also define stuff like the header style in here. So if I want to have a different header style, I could now use background color. Um, I don't know, let's just for testing, uh, make it black. And then we see we got a black background. We could also now set the header tint color, uh, which should probably hopefully be the text. Um, another F and also the icon. And then we see we got this nice dark color. However, since we're using native base, we probably wanna use the real colors because native base has some uh, colors, uh, color, mm, color. Yeah, some primary, secondary, whatever color. And we probably wanna use those colors already in here because you don't wanna mess around with different values. So we really wanna make this from one single place. And for this, we can call the extend theme function and we can say theme equals extend theme from native base. And in here, we could actually override now different colors are like primary, secondary. I'm actually gonna keep it like it is. The only thing I wanted was a reference to the theme. And now we're gonna supply this theme to our native base provider, just like this. And the good news is now we can access the colors from the theme. So for our header style, for the background color, I'm not gonna use theme.colors. And then we can do whatever we want. So I wanna use a secondary color. If I make a dot like 500, it turns into this. And boom, there we go. Uh, actually gonna use a bit darker, 600. Nice, this looks cool. And this is pretty much what we could, we could probably make this like a global setting thing and apply it to all of these. Um, like const header style. Um, um, mm -hmm. Let's see if this works. Uh, and then I'm gonna give this one the title and all the properties from header style. Will this work? It could probably make life a bit easier because then we just need to set this on our other screens. So for the creator, we're gonna call this, um, we'll probably wanna call this one trending memes because this is like the homepage and we're gonna show 
um, a bit of trending memes, then we got this, and this one will be title, I don't know, yeah, about the app. Let's see if this works. Meme generator, meme generator, it also uh, changed the names in here. So there could be a discussion now if you like this or not. Um, but anyway, we're gonna define our custom handler because this is still using like the React Navigation colors and we wanna make this our own version. So what we're gonna do is we simply define a function, um, function custom draw content. Actually, we could probably also say, can we say it like this? Yeah, we should be able to. Uh, and this will also get some kind of props. And uh, now within here, we could return whatever we want, uh, but it should be the content for the side menu. So I'm just gonna give it like a box now for testing uh, and say uh, text test. Okay, this is our custom drawer content. And now I'm gonna use this custom drawer content for our um, drawer. We're gonna do this by getting into the draw navigator property and say draw content equals, and then we got a function in here. And we're gonna use the custom drawer content. And of course, also pass in all the props we got. And uh, I need to be careful to close the right brackets, but I think this should be it. Uh, can't find variable text. Please just add the automatic import. Oh, damn. Like, it's not that hard. Uh, well, okay. And if I open the menu now, we see uh, a tiny little text up there. Uh, I could probably give this like a padding of 10 and then it would appear here, right? So there are all these shortcuts, P, PT, padding top, M, margin, MT, ML, uh, that you can use on the native base elements. So uh, those utilities will be used uh, for some styling, some easy styling. And as you can see, we don't have the React Navigation Draw anymore. We now have our custom draw and we can shape this exactly to our own needs. Um, however, one thing I wanted also to supply to the draw navigator is the initial route name. So I'm gonna set this to home. So it will always render the home screen first. I could also set this now to creator. And if the application would boot up, um, it would now show the creator screen instead. But anyway, we're gonna stick to home. So that means we can now define our little screen in here. And for this, we should probably start with um, a scroll view. And I think there's a specific component called draw content scroll view. And this will also get all the props that were passed to this component. Now within this scroll view, we can now define uh, the view. And we're gonna do this with a bit of layouting, first of all, using a V stack. A V stack is a vertical stack and an H stack is a horizontal stack. So vertical stack right now. Uh, we're gonna give this, well, we don't give, what do we wanna give this? No, we don't give it this. <laughs> um, I'm gonna first of all use it like this. And then what we want to do is we wanna iterate the props. So we wanna iterate props dot state dot we could probably define an interface if we wanted to um i forgot about that but that's not too too much of a problem however what we get is a name for the uh, round and an index which is the number okay and now once again i need to be careful with those brackets in here we got name uh, index then we got the error function this wasn't an error function. This is how an error function looks. And then we got our component. So um, I could probably just for testing, make a little text in here uh, and say name. Let's see what this prints out. Okay, home creator about. This is good news because this means we're able to iterate the props uh, being the different draw screens that were passed to the navigator. So uh, based on this, we we'll pretty much just need to create a few uh, buttons here. 
And to make that, we can actually use the pressable. We could also make a, a use a button uh, from native base, but I think a pressable will work uh, a tiny bit better. Um, the most important thing here is the on press. And for on press, uh, what we want to do is um, we actually don't really need this part. Can we just do like props? Uh, so all the props have this navigation and then we can use navigate to the actual route. I don't know if it would work like this. Probably not. Um, uh, we also need like name in here now. Uh, unexpected. Oh, I'm messing up all the UI. Actually, this shouldn't be closed immediately. It should be like this and then we should have some kind of text in here uh, with our name. Okay, will this work? Let's see. Uh, maximum update then this can happen when a component repeatedly calls set state. Uh, yeah, I should probably do this in a different way. Uh, more like this, right? Let's see. Um, I can go to about. I can go to the creator and I can go to home. This is a great success uh, because this means the general logic be, uh, works and we just need to uh, create a proper UI for this. Now let's start probably inside here. Uh, what we want to do in here is maybe use like a uh, horizontal stick um, and I'm gonna yeah, you just stick with it. And I'm also gonna use an icon maybe but let's start with the text. Um, text, I'm gonna give this a bigger font weight of like uh, 500 and then we're gonna have the name of the route in here. Okay, well that's really big. <laughs> what a huge font size. Um, I also want to see if this text is selected or not uh, and therefore we're gonna have to get a bit more advanced here. So the color of this will depend on which uh, item is selected. So we can therefore use the index of our iteration here and check if the index of the item is equal to props.state.index. And if that's the case, this item is active. And if it's not the case, it's inactive. So let's say for inactive, we wanna use the color gray 700. And yes, we can use it in a short form like this for all the uh, native base components. That's pretty cool, right? And otherwise we're going to use secondary 600, what we already use for our header. And we see this turns home red. It turns the creator red or it turns about red. And that's pretty nice. Additionally, uh, we might want to use an icon. Um, so for the icon, actually, we can pretty much use the same logic for that icon. Uh, same color. Um, but additionally, I also want to give it like a size, a uh, bigger size. Um, and then we also actually need the icon. So we can use um, different icons and we just need to use the S property here and then pass in the icon. Now, there are a few icons already bundled with Expo and we can use them. So I want to use these like material, I think they're called material community icons, something like this. Um, I don't know if it's actually installed or if we need to install this. No, vector icons, uh, expo, 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 expo. I don't know if expo automatically installs it. I, I think so. Let's try. Uh, let's try to use material community icons. And for the name, well, for the name, uh, let's just try something out and let's just use home. Yes, this works. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Look, still, the screen looks still pretty horrible, but we're gonna, we're gonna fix this in a second. Actually, we can start this. Let's do to our uh, stick here. Um, let's use margin two and margin X of uh, one. It should already give them a bit more space. Um, well, if we do space in here, what happens? Will this work? Yeah, this gives already space between them. That's good. Um, then for the pressable, we can also probably um, add more padding, 
uh, we could separate actually we could also just do it in here like if we do it in there or here shouldn't be a big difference uh, it's getting closer it's getting closer uh, we will get there at some point actually the text is still quite small uh, but anyway uh, also for this deck uh, we probably want to have space between the icon and the actual text uh, I want to make sure that uh, nope the alignment of the items is also centered come on center there we go uh, but I think it should be anyway Okay, uh, we probably don't want to use the same icon for everything, so let's add a little function up here. Uh, const get icon based on the screen name. And within that function, we're gonna switch the screen name. And then we're gonna check the different cases. So we actually know the cases. So we know we have an, a home screen. In that case, we're gonna return um, a home. This just means this is not uh, the icon that we then wanna display, right? Uh, we need to make sure that we get that straight. And then we got two more cases. We got about, this should use probably something like information, just trying it out. Uh, and then creator, I don't know, there's always like a fire icon. And then we have a default case that should just uh, return undefined. Okay, now we just need to supply that get icon to the name in here. So let's see, I'm gonna close this and say name get icon based on the name of the screen. And then we have different icons. I actually still, like this whole menu is very small and condensed. Um, I don't know, uh, I'm gonna probably see. Um, but anyway, what I also want to do is uh, style the pressable a bit more because this looks quite boring. I actually enjoyed the uh, UI of the React navigation we had before. So let's do the background of the pressable, set this. And uh, we're going to apply the same logic like we had before once again. So if the index is currently the active one, uh, I'm going to use secondary 100 and otherwise I'm going to use transparent parent so that should give a nice little background touch right okay we can work with this because now we give this a bit more padding uh-huh uh-huh yeah um we don't really we, we maybe want to make this rounded as well um so we can set this to different values i'm just going to make this md uh, you see this is becoming nice rounded already uh we have the on press uh, we should also give this one a key, actually. Uh, that could be the index. But I still feel like there's something missing in here. Um, so in my previous code, I had an additional V stack around this. I don't know if this made any sense. Actually, to me, it doesn't really make any sense. But let's let's just try um, if this makes things any better. Um, no, this is not what I wanted. No, this doesn't really make things better. I don't think we're gonna need this. Um, I think the only thing we really need is to make the, um, probably our H stack should have some kind of padding. I don't know, what are we working with? Let's see. Yeah, okay, that's probably too much, but this is getting better. Uh, also the space between the icons this is way too much. Yeah, that's better. And also here the space could be a bit like, that should probably be enough. Actually, this menu is getting pretty nice. Um, I like it. Um, if we add something to the pressable, will this make life better? I really like to just play around with a few values and see, yeah, this is actually nice. Nice, now we got big buttons. Yeah, I think this is this is our final solution. Um, yeah, probably, maybe even no padding here. Uh, we could play around with this all day long. Uh, yeah, that should be, our th no, that's too close. Yeah, I think that's fine. Uh, okay, we got a nice content in here. We can scroll this, so if you had like a huge menu, this would definitely work. Uh, we could also bring in a center element here. 
and then use like a heading and call this menu and then we would have this one up there uh, we could probably set the color. Actually, if you directly want to give something a name, um, you could just use it like this and then say uh, primary. So then we'd use the primary color scheme. Oh, it doesn't work for the for heating. That's interesting. That's the, or do I, I think I guess do I still need to use the value? Hmm. Okay, this is interesting. It's only working for other elements. So then back to um, do we need to use tint color here uh, or just color? Let's give this a try. Oh, fail to compile. Oh, where, where did I go wrong? Oh, this should probably be a string, right? Yeah, okay, this is certainly not how it works. Let's check out quickly the uh, object we wanted to style. There we go. Um, I'm hanging. Well, okay, we can give this a different size and I do want to give it a different color. Uh, where's the color? <laughs> like, just setting the color to this? Yeah, okay. It was, sorry, that was too easy for me. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, there we go. Secondary, I don't know, how high does this go? To 900, I guess? Yeah, but that's not really getting any better. Uh, well, something like this. Okay. I think we got a nice draw navigation in our React Native application. I think we did a good job so far. Um, and because we can navigate around, we uh, like the world's open to us. We can do everything we want in our application now. Um, we will actually leave the about screen just as it is. And we're gonna focus on the home screen now. For the home screen, we need a few things. So first of all, under assets, I'm gonna add um, a JSON called trending. Now, what we wanted to do is we wanna use uh, APIs from Rapid API. So I'm gonna open this. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't expose any keys in here. Uh, ah, certainly, I, I guess I don't will. So let's check this out, Rapid API. And we're gonna use the Reddit trending meme. Uh, it should be Reddit meme, right? Yes. So this has a simple endpoint of trending memes and top memes. Um, and I've just checked out the example response here, uh, both for trending memes and for uh, top memes. And this is what I use because during development, I don't wanna blow up my quota. Um, so I'm gonna put this into a JSON file and then I'm gonna create a new hook. Uh, we've done this, if you followed the previous tutorial on doing it with React and Capacitor, uh, this is also following the same scheme. So new file, I'm gonna call this useapi.ts and within that file, we're gonna make all the HTTP calls. Actually, I'm gonna install another package, oh, this looks interesting, uh, called Axios. However, the problem was like, <laughs> I, I, I tried Axios in the morning and it was at a specific version. So npm install Axios. It was at this version. Then I installed it in another project in the afternoon and nothing worked and it immediately Axios jumped to 1.0, which was actually interesting because I've been using Axios for like quite some time. Uh, I never knew they haven't reached 1.0. So I was using this old version, probably Axios uh, 1.0 will also work for you. Uh, I just like Axios a bit more over fetch requests because you can make more settings. And we're gonna see this in the end when we also use the second API from Rapid API. However, we're gonna start with the first one and let's begin by saying export const use API. So this is our custom hook and it should have return statement where we return all the functions. Now, our first function will be called get uh, trending, uh, get trending. And we can also, uh, I'm gonna copy this over from our previous project. First of all, use a little interface for trending memes and later also uh, for a meme object. So by doing this, we can now specify exactly the return type of our get trending, uh, just make sure I'll get this right. So get trending uh, is an asynchronous, yeah, well, somewhat like this, but I can do this on my own, an asynchronous function, and it will return a promise that is 
an array of trending memes. Uh, 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 arrow, open the function. Like sometimes TypeScript looks a bit horrible, uh, but in the end, it's gonna be really helpful. Like when people use get trending, they immediately know that they get a back a promise uh, with an array. Like this is pretty cool. Okay, um, we can now import our trending just simply using import trending from assets trending where we put the file. And then we wanna make sure that this is as close to reality as possible during development. So we don't wanna return the plain data. We're gonna return really a promise. So return new promise. And I highly recommend this always when you develop something, try to be as close as possible to the uh, final solution because then it's just a little switch that we need to make in the end to go from uh, a fake promise to actually calling our real API. And what we're gonna do is return a new promise. Um, I'm actually gonna use set timeout here, just for like, because I wanna fake a bit of loading time, uh, probably two seconds, so we can later have like a loading or something in place. And then we're gonna resolve with the trending data. And voila, our function and hook is happy, so happy. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's go over to the uh, home screen now because on the home screen we're gonna try and load this information we can directly use this in a use effect in the beginning yeah there's a snippet for use effect I don't really want that snippet because like this is the most basic use effect you're gonna see um, I'm gonna call this load memes so I'm gonna extracting the logic still in its own function and then I'm gonna call load memes here in use effect. And I'm gonna add the empty array in here. So <clears throat> it's only called once or during development, it's actually called twice in recent React versions. Um, but I forgot about this and guess what happened? I also used the real API and do -do 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 -do, I made like 30 calls in about a second. <laughs> that, was, that was really fun. Uh, Spoiler, no, it wasn't fun. It almost blew up my quota for that month. Anyway, um, now I also need access to our uh, hook. So let's get uh, get trending from use API. Hey, come on. There we go. Okay, so I can say um, cons results equals await get trending. Then we have to mark this as an asynchronous function. And then I can probably, oops, where's my snippet for logging stuff? Hey, where is it? It's gone. Ah, there it is, nice. Um, actually, I should see, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, 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 I'm just curious. <laughs> Uh, are we, yeah, 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 here's the log statement. I was given, I don't know what happened to my brain. Um, File home screen load memes results. So this is the data. In fact, uh, like this is cool logging, um, but we can do better if we use the, where is it? React native debugger. Uh, so let's try if we can get this running. Uh, you can get the React native debugger by doing something. React native debugger. I think I've installed it with brew. Uh, then we'll react native debugger, there we go. Yeah, I've installed it with brew, brew install, cask, uh, react native debugger. I think you can also do it with an NPM script. The different ways, uh, but I recommend it because I found this a bit better to debug our application. However, I don't know, I, I had some problems connecting it. So far, as far as I know, our expo application is running on port. Uh, will this show up in here? I think it should actually, like, where's my developer menu? Hello? Hello? Okay, uh, yeah, this is the port. Um, so I'm gonna add a new tab in here and use the port, no, not this one, this one. Confirm, okay, so we're waiting for a client. Let's say we wanna debug remote JS. Okay, and we see yeah, we see the log statement. So for me, coming from web development, I just like to have it here in the console and have pretty much the web UI. I don't know what you're uh, complaining about right now. No native splash screen, unable to find, yeah. Deal with it. 
but I got re I got logging. <laughs> That's more important than working application. So if I wanted to do any kind of logging, I would check this. Please remind me if we can encounter a problem. I'm gonna get back to this view. It's also pretty nice to inspect other elements of your application. However, back to the code, because we've seen we actually get our trending results in here. And um, while we get them, um, we want to probably have some kind of loading and we also want to keep track of the memes. So let's use state here uh, with uh, trending meme. So this could be an array of trending memes or it could be null in the beginning. Uh, and then with our results, we're going to call set memes to the results because we've used all the nice types everywhere. This works flawless. Um, also, we set the loading to true in the beginning. So afterwards we can call set loading false. So then we can have a nice little loading spinner in place. Okay, um, let's start the view by wrapping everything first of all in a scroll view. So if we no, um, from uh, scroll from native base. Yeah, um, there we go. Uh, because if there's more content on the screen and there will certainly be more later on, uh, we want to make sure that we can actually scroll that view. Now, um, first of all, if we're loading, we probably want to display some kind of loading animation or what I always use is a skeleton. And I think at this point, pretty much every UI library out there has a skeleton view. Um, so I found this little snippet. So let me bring this in. Um, it centers. No, not from React. Come on. Everything I use is from native base. Get this right. VStack, oops, as well. <sighs> okay, if I do automatically, it works. <laughs> Great. Great. Anyway, everything from native base. So um, if we're loading and get trending, I'm going to set. Actually, I'm not going to do get trending for now. Uh, and then we probably have to uh, reload the application once to get into the loading state. Um, hello? Uh, uh, uh. Where's my loading? Yeah, no native splash screen registered. Come on. That shouldn't be the problem of that screen. Am I on the right screen? I feel like I'm on the wrong screen. Uh, and where loading is true and we should use our skeleton. Where is my skeleton? Uh, come on, let's add a text. I feel like the, the, the text component here is uh, like console lock. <laughs> uh, it should really, really work. I do have to supply a specific uh, theme to my uh, screw my loading. Like it is loading. What's wrong with you? Loading is definitely set to true. Or are you compl still complaining about some kind of mysterious issue uh, you have with my remote debugging? Invariant violation main has not been registered. This can happen if Metro is run from the wrong folder. Nah. Let's do an R4 reload. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's not being good. No native splash screen registered. Like, yeah, I require node React Native reanimated. <laughs> uh, this is so fun sometimes with React Native. Not. Um, so I'm going to close my debugging stuff again. I'm just going to bring up npm run iOS again. Sorry that I wanted to debug my application. Expo, really? I'm really sorry about that. Can you just reload yourself? Uh, four times. That wasn't really uh, that was really unnecessary expo. You should just do it once. Well, well, well. Let's try. I was bundling memes debug. Okay, at least we see my debug message again. However, I don't yet. Uh, I'm not seeing my skeleton view from native base. Why is that the case? Uh, it could be different problems. Uh, first of all, let us set the loading to false in here. Uh, then also, oh, this is, uh, by the way, if command D is not working, you can also use control command Z. 
Uh, and then can, let's stop the remote debugging. I think this did more harm to our application than it actually helped. And I can try and reload. Okay, finally. I don't know. Seems like uh, remote debugging and skeleton views don't work well together. <laughs> Anyway, now we got this nice little skeleton. So uh, we have a centered component uh, and then we have a vertical stack in here, which is using first, oops, a skeleton text. Uh, so there's the text object up here and then we have a uh, height of 40. We could also make this a bit bigger if we want to, 60. Um, yeah, or 80, I don't know, whatever works for you. Cool. Now, um, what we want to do as well at this point is um what do we want to do actually <laughs> uh oh yeah we want to display the information from the api in a swiper component because a swiper component is cool and there is the react native swiper component um so the the web swiper swiper js apparently isn't working but this one should be so let's go ahead and install the react native swiper package uh there we go is there anything else uh, 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 nope not really only thing we need is to import swiper yes we can do this and then we got some styles Let's try. Let's. Uh, I just like to try the like the default in here. Um, so I'll just bring this in from style sheet. Yes, yeah, style sheet is certainly from React Native. Uh, and then we got this view. Okay. So if we are not loading anymore, uh, then we can do this. So if we're not loading, um, and and then we're gonna show the swiper view i don't care just import it from anywhere and then uh yeah well not the best ui probably yet uh but it definitely works um yeah there are also also pagination at the bottom so we we definitely made sure that the um stuff works now i just want to make this uh completely different so what I want to do is I want to display my view, my memes in there, right? So I'm just gonna get rid of, um, yeah, I'm gonna show the buttons, but I'm gonna show, I'm gonna disable the pagination. There we go. Um, and then we don't have any swipes. Maybe that's why you're now mad. Probably that's why you're mad, yeah. Um, but I can also remove like slide whatever in here i actually don't know if we need the styles let's i will just leave them like they are for now and i'm also uh use maybe just a one second delay or no delay at all um because now we just want to build up this view and it's kind of annoying to <laughs> wait for two seconds all the time okay uh but we can now iterate our memes so memes dot map um we get a meme and an index yeah, that's a good idea to call it undex. It would actually be fun, like undex. Is this an English word, undex? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna just wrap everything inside of view now. Um, view base, this sounds also interesting, but yeah, I just wanna use the view. Uh, key is the index. And then I'm gonna use a vertical stack in here again. Uh, I'm gonna align the items. No, align items, please. Center. Um, I'm probably gonna use a bit of. What is this? Oh yeah, I used the wrong buckets. Oh, better. Um, in that vertical stick. Okay, we got the arrows. That's nice. Uh, I'm gonna use another header here. I'm gonna use um, meme.title, yes, there we go. And then we should be able, yeah, nice programmer move. And um, well, that behaves a bit strange, but probably uh, we're still not yet finished with the iter implementation. Uh, we also wanna add an image. And this image now comes from a URL so do we add the image from react native already 
Uh, yes, we did. So then we can display the image using source. Uh, I'm going to have to pass in Yuri and then meme.url. There we go. So by default, uh, by default, this doesn't display anything because we haven't set a style. <laughs> so let's set the style for this as well. I'm going to set the width to 95% of the view. So it's covering up pretty much everything. Uh, and then we're going to set the height to, uh, no, 300, something like that. Okay, there we go. Um, this is trending on Reddit. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, and set alien noises. Yeah, well, that works. Works pretty nice so far. Can we just save this? And there we go. Nice. We got a swiper implemented. Cool. Now we just need to make this maybe a bit. Mm, well, uh, let's see. For the heating, uh, we can pass in some styles. Um, style equals styles dot text. Uh, what did we supply for text? Well, probably not white. That's maybe not the best uh, idea. Uh, font size 30, font weight bold. Yeah, but what we want to do is want to use the theme once again. So if we are here, um, we can access the theme, our uh, native base theme a bit differently. So I'm going to copy this into my functional component and also now access the theme through uh, use theme. So we can say const theme equals use theme from native base. And then instead of using white color, I could now use theme colors uh, prime prime primary dot like 500 and it should turn the text nice into this this is cool um that's cool like we got access to the theme and the values all the time that's pretty pretty good uh but besides that i want to also have a bit of space here between our vstack elements so let's say space between them should be four yeah, this is not correct. Then we have a bit more space between them and then we probably also want to have like a margin top. Um, set this to four as well. Okay, getting better. Now we, the whole swiper thing has like a background color, right? I don't like this at all. Um, don't need this one. Um, also, I'm not sure about the height because we're gonna have something else below this. Let's check this out. Um, if I had like another in here, where would this render? Right, it renders down here. This def uh, can you see this? Uh, it renders down here. That is definitely a problem. It should render like somewhere here. So we definitely need to change the height of our element. And I think we can do this with the wrapper somehow. Uh, let's see. I'm going to set the wrapper height here to something like 400. Oh, nice. That was already enough. <laughs> that was way too easy. <laughs> um, well, 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 I don't, I don't know if this is like, this is not the correct height for this. Uh, I don't know if I need to change the image. Mm -mm. Ah, I should definitely do the content, uh, the resize mode for an image. So I'm going to also set the resize method for our image. I'm going to set this to uh, auto resize. What is this? Um, I actually meant to do something like contain. Um, resize. This is not what I want. I want resize mode. Ah, better. Now it contains this. Nice. Uh, and I could probably now change this also to be a bit smaller so that it would work better with our little arrows. And we also see that the follow up text is immediately there. Um, now we have quite a lot of space up there. Um, I should probably make this a bit smaller. Yes. Nice. We got a trending swiper uh, API thing. We can now actually change this to make a real API call. I think you won't see a difference because um, 
well, I think the API returns the same data right now. But anyway, let's do this. Uh, so I'm going to comment this out for a second. And what I'm going to return is, or I'm going to first of all get uh, results from await, uh, await axios dot get. Um, now I'm going to use the endpoint of the rapid API uh, function. Where's the endpoint? Uh, this one right here. So I'm going to use this in here. And then we also need to supply a little header configuration. So headers. And within the headers, we're going to need two elements. Uh, we can see this here, x rapid API key, x rapid API host. I'm going to put them in x rapid API key and host. Um, and that should actually be enough, right? Um, so let's log out. Uh, come on. Console log my result. And this will be results. Actually, this is data because, uh, or, uh, well, or it is one result. It's not results. Um, and we can return result dot data because that's actually the, the main part of our Axios call. So let's see if this works. I'm curious. I'm going to hit save and um, that was pretty fast. But it looks to me like, yeah, we did a lot of logging in here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. My result, config, adapt. yeah, because we locked the whole object and not just data. But somewhere in there is the real data. And we've been able to return this to everyone. That's what I meant in the beginning by making it close to the reality as possible. We just have to, we haven't changed anything, only the API call in here. And because we're now debugging the application or building out the application and we don't want to blow up and explode our quota, we can now easily comment this part out. We know that it works, so we can comment it in in the future again. But during development, we can just continue with our promise function and everything is fine. Cool. That is actually nice progress. We got all the navigation and we got the start of the home screen. So next part to tackle is actually creating memes. And if you followed the previous tutorial where we built the React application with Capacitor, you know actually how we did this. So we created a meme selector based on images. And the first thing we're going to do is actually bring in a few images to our assets. So I'm going to copy over this image folder here where we got a few of those thumbnails. You can find all of this in the GitHub repository or just use your own ones. Um, I made up the, the names of the list. Uh, is it basically a subset yeah, uh, of the meme API. So the meme generator rapid API. Uh, there is something to get all the images and that response includes a long list of these uh, meme names. And so this is where I took those few names from. Again, we want to try and make this um, like a little dummy list first of all, so we don't need to call the real API, um, especially for the list. And there is one thing that is different. So in the previous web tutorial, I just linked pretty much the names, then we could resolve that name to the image. However, with React Native, we actually need to require that image. So with this syntax, so this has now become an object uh, and is no, no longer just an array. Um, think about what you want. Um, it's, it's easier to load the images if you do it like this, but of course I enjoyed the web way a bit more. However, let's get into our API. So let's open the use API once again, and we're going to implement a function to uh, get the memes. So const get memes. This is going to be an asynchronous call once again. Uh, promise will be an array of memes this time. Uh, and <laughs> like this syntax all the time. It looks, uh, I guess to, to newcomers, this looks really horrible. Uh, that's probably why they don't like TypeScript. Anyway, uh, we're going to return a new promise once again. Um, this means closing a few brackets. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a result array. And then we iterate all the entries 
object.entries from our memes. Do we already add the import? No, we haven't. Uh, so we can now import our uh, list memes up here and we can iterate the memes. And for each element, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna get the uh, key value. Is it a tuple actually? I think this is a tuple. Like I haven't used that word since university, but I think it's a tuple. <laughs> Probably it's wrong. Probably it's not a tuple and nobody uses a tuple anymore. Um, so to follow the meme scheme, uh, it has always a name and an image. And I don't want to have this as an object. So that's why we're creating a little array from this name, key, image, value, and then closing, closing this, and then resolving our fun with the result uh, implicitly has type any. Yes, we can change this. Now it has type meme and has the correct interface. Great. Okay. On top of that, what we want to do in our home screen is where is our home screen actually? <laughs> Here. Uh, I also want to create a new meme selector component. So meme selector dot tsx and that meme selector will be included. So const meme sel come on, const meme selector um, equals something. Uh, we got a return in here, of course. We're gonna return uh, for now, once again, a text uh, selector in here. Well, we could make this a Hitting, then we actually get the native base import right and export default meme selector again uh, I should probably change my approach to using export default in the near future so export default is not the best okay uh, let's go to the home screen and below this yeah exactly where we got the test right now we could probably do like a little container uh, with a margin of four and within that container, we gonna throw our meme selector. Uh, we just need to add the import and then we get this view. Great. Now, uh, from the previous tutorial, uh, we can actually uh, use quite some code. So the idea of this meme selector is pretty much to have a grid of these images. You can select an image and you could show which of those memes is selected. So to do this, we actually define an interface of meme props. Uh, and then we're gonna make sure that our meme selector actually uses these meme props. That means um, we have an active meme and once we click on a meme here, we can bring that information up to the parent, which is pretty much the home. So on home, it now already complains because we're not implementing on select. So let's directly do this. On select, uh, we get a meme and we're gonna call the function uh, that we call meme selected. So const meme selected equals meme, uh, meme, there we go. And on selected, we're gonna do something. Um, actually, I think we can do this because it's gonna be pretty easy. Um, so what we want to do is we want to inject uh, navigation here. Uh, probably we're going to do it later. For now, let's, let's, let's put a lock in here, selected something, and then we can see that we actually selected something. Um, do we already call this function? Nope, we still need to. So there we go. So now if we select something in our selector, it should bubble up to the top. And oops, that was a wrong key. <laughs> and we should also see it then in our uh, lockdown here. But for now, we haven't actually made this um, meme selector. So let's do this on the meme selector. As I said, the cool thing is if you've already developed this for the web, you can copy a lot of your code um, for your React Native application. So especially if you just have like specific components, uh, you can pretty much copy this. So in, in our case, um, we have get memes from our API, we have the state to memes in the meme selector, we have the interface, um, and within our use effect, we can call load memes and set memes, um, just like this. Also, uh, we can use 
the function we had before meme selector on the selector to call uh, the on select of our props. So if we select something in the selector, this is the way we're gonna bubble it up to our parent. And that means we basically just need to implement the actual uh, meme view. So I'm gonna wrap this in a fragment uh, and then use another uh, header in here. Um, select your meme because you can select a meme and then this will bring us to the next screen on the creator where you can add the top and the bottom text to actually uh, generate your own custom meme. And then uh, we need to do a little flex layout. There is row and column, I think, for a native base. So different UI elements. Uh, we could also use flex, we could use row or column. Um, they're all pretty similar and they it's kind of obvious what they do. So a row, um, maybe we're gonna do, uh, maybe we just start with a row. And then we're gonna do a pressable again uh, because it's not a, really a button. So I'm gonna use pressable um, on press. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call meme selected uh, with a meme. Oh, we should probably do like a little iteration in here, right? Um, so let's do this memes.map. And for every meme, we're gonna create this fun. No, it makes more sense, right? Uh, and then for the meme, we can use an image now, I think. Uh, image source is hopefully meme.image. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Uh, but let's see, let's hit save. Oh, nice, yeah. Um, problem is that this is one big row and it should actually wrap. Um, so if we're coming from rep development, you can easily now use flex wrap and set this to wrap and it wraps every row. Additionally, we maybe wanna add like a bit of margin. Uh, let's set this to five. Okay, uh, actually, um, actually I just want margin butt and margin top, so not everywhere. So let's change this. Okay, that's better. Um, that's actually pretty good already. Now, is my own problem that I've used different sizes. I could probably have like a fixed size for the image or should use better sizes for the thumbnails. Um, so I would have to use something like a specific size now. Uh, what is this actually? If I use something like this. Uh-huh, okay. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Oh, that's probably because we're using the image from native base, right? Thanks native base, you're doing a pretty good job here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> they actually all have the right size, that's cool. Um, can I also center this on the row? Uh, align items center. Uh, actually it should be, I think it should be justify content center, right? Hmm, not too bad. I think there's some kind of padding here or probably the row breaks. Mm -hmm. Can we also do like base in here. Wow, this is cool. Wow, it just works. Oh, that's too much of space, right? Let's just do two of space. We don't want to overdo this. Uh, actually, it kind of looked better before. I don't know what's going on here down there. Um, but anyway, that's okay. That's okay for now. Uh, for the pressable, maybe we can add for the pressable a bit of margin as well. Um, well, well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think this is actually the perfect way. Nice, I like it. Like, we got this now. Um, we can now, can I already click on this and see the log? Let's check. Yeah, exactly, select it and then it gives us the image and the name and this log comes from the home screen, right? Selected meme, right, perfect. This is exactly how it should look like. Um, also for the pressable, we can use something like a little shadow if we wanted to. So native base really has uh, a few like hidden things that are pretty cool. Uh, you can say how big the shadow should be. So I think it should be from zero to four. 
Um, I don't know if you actually see this. I'm going to put this a bit top uh, just to make sure I'm not covering this. So Shadow 4 is probably a bit too much. Uh, I'm going to use it like this. And um, also it's going to complain most likely because I haven't used a key. I'm going to set the key to meme.name as well. And then we got a nice meme selector down here. Oh, the only thing is um, that I want to give the active meme uh, a border. So in order to have an active meme, or we actually do have an active meme string right here, uh, but on this view, we're really not really using it. We're going to use it on the other screen. Uh, so maybe we're going to keep, yeah, let's keep this open for a second. Uh, we're going to get into adding a, a border to these in a second. However, we're going to do the routing first. And for this, we're going to need to go to our home screen. And if we use the um, navigation control, uh, the navigation controller, no, navigation container, uh, we get access to the navigation through our props. Uh, and because we're using TypeScript, we should actually do a little interface for this. So the interface could look like this. We can import navigation prop from React Navigation Native and then define our props like this. And then we get access to navigation in here. And we can say, okay, this is using the router props interface. This is pretty cool because otherwise I would just have to use like any in here to satisfy TypeScript. Now I can use it like this. And within our meme selected, I can now remove this and say, uh, navigation dot and we get the code completion. So we get all these things from uh, the uh, navigation container. If we have used a stack container, we could also push views. However, we don't have well, we haven't used this. So we can't use push. The only thing we can use is navigate and we're going to navigate to a different screen. We want to go to the creator screen and I also want to pass like params to that screen. Um, we can do it. Is there no? Is there? Um, yeah, I could put in whatever I want, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna send meme meme dot name. Okay, so let's see. If I click on something, it brings me to the meme generator screen exactly like I wanted. So I can go back here and I can click there. And now the only thing we need to figure out is. Is this actually the right meme that we've seen sent to the creator screen? Um, for this, we're going to need not only navigation uh, here, but also the route props. So the interface for the creator screen now looks a tiny bit different. Um, and we actually only need route. We actually, we, we could omit navigation because we don't need the navigation in here, um, but it won't hurt. And for the route, we can now specify exactly that we expect in the params to be a meme uh, with the name. So now if I implement a nice little use effect here, and I'm just going to copy this because I'm really getting tired of writing use effect today. I'm going to add use effect, um, but I'm actually not going to loading any memes in here. But what I want is I want to grab the meme so I want to destructure it from route.params. Now we can also enter that page without actually passing any meme name if we just go from the menu to the creator. So I'm also going to add a fallback and say uh, meme this is like the default selected uh, 10 guy. So that means we always going to have a meme here uh, and then we can also set our selected meme. Um, this also means that we need all the memes, right? Yeah. So let's import our memes list so we can make the connection between the meme and the image. And then also add use state once again uh, with a selected and selected name because we need both. We need the selected meme. Um, so if we access memes and meme, we get this um, this require basically the image and this is just the plain name that we give. Anyway, let's say name here and then I'm going to use meme. So this will confirm if we pass this. So if we just go about and then to creator, uh, we have 10 guy. If I go to home and select the dog, um, 
oh, it's not refreshing because we haven't passed the dependency array the route. So this is certainly important. Now we already see advice doc or advice dogan. Uh, this one close enough. And if I just go to about and then to creator, it says 10 guy because this is our fallback meme. So our meme selector works exactly as we had planned. And we can actually add this meme selector already to our view as well. So let's start and make this a scroll view from native base. And then we're gonna add the meme selector in here. We're gonna have to implement on select once again. So when we've selected a meme, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply, um, we're gonna simply uh, set the selected image and the selected name. That's pretty much what we want to do. Okay, with a meme. Uh, mm -mm. Also, there's one more thing. Uh, the meme selector has an active meme property, which is optional. And at this point, we actually want to use this. So we want to set the active meme, active meme, to uh, our selected name. Okay, there we go. So now we already got the selection in here and I could select them. Uh, it would trigger our function here and set our selected. However, not super important. But what we now wanna do is, or what we can do is we can finish our meme selector and the uh, border around an image because now we know which image is selected. So let's go into the image of our meme selector once again. And uh, let's say border color. Um, since we're using the image component from native base, you need to make sure that you're using image from native base. Like pretty much everything we have in here could also come from React Native. Oh. If we're using the image, we can use the theme like we had before. So I can just go ahead and Give it like a whatever, Cyan 600 border. Uh, we don't really see the border yet because I think our border width is like zero. Border width, and let's set this to, I don't know, two. And then we're gonna see, like make it a bit more obvious. There we go. And now what we need to do, we just need to make this optional. That's all we need to do. So uh, let's check our props dot Active meme, and this is really why I like having an interface defined for the props. Um, if we had just any in here, we would assume that yeah, there is like an active meme set on props, but if we have an interface, we immediately get this code completion here for the props. Props, okay, there's on select an active meme. Okay, so if props active meme is equal to our meme.name, then we're gonna have a border of four, otherwise we're gonna have a border of zero. And let's see, this one is active, and it just works like this. That's so nice. Actually, this row layout we have in here, that's pretty cool. Like we might, like this, why, why is this centered and this is not centered? Huh, this is interesting. This is a good question actually. Uh, where did we wrap this? We've wrapped this into a container here. What happens if we don't wrap it into a container? Yeah, that's actually, I think that's actually better. So we're gonna remove this and on the meme selector, we probably implement the, a bit of padding for the heating right here. So or padding, uh, can we use padding left? Okay, I just center this maybe. That would be cool as well. Let's give this a try. Da -da 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 -da. Center from, no, no, this is not, come on. It is from native base. Everything that I import is from native base. Yeah, well, this is, yeah, this is it. This is exactly what I wanted to have. Um, cool. So we have finished our meme selector. Um, on the creator screen, we also get when we select a meme. So the next step right now is actually to implement that creator screen. And to implement that, we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need the input fields for the top and bottom, uh, which we can do with a little uh, vertical or horizontal stick, or actually combining both. Uh, then we have a button to generate the meme, and then we wanna bring up a modal in which we show the result, and then a download button. So this is like the rest of, or the, the next part. 
But so far, I want to play around with this because this is pretty cool. Nah, let's let's do this. Let's uh, implement the next function. That means we first of all need input fields. We need a field for the top text and we need a field for the bottom text. We probably also want to have like a result at some point. Um, and we also might want to have some kind of loading state in between, which is false in the beginning. So just a bit more of our state. Now let's scroll down to this section <laughs> and um, let's, I don't know if we want to put this into a container. Will this give us anything? Let's try this out. Container, I'm going to put the scroll view as well in that container. Yeah, that does something. Can we just say like align content, I don't know, center, um, align. Like I, I actually don't want to use, um, actually it's justify content usually, but I don't think this will really help. Like there is a center element, so I don't know. I probably don't want to use this as all at all. Won't help us anyway. Let's just say if we're not loading, uh, so if we're not loading, we're going to display our form. And within that form, what we need is, um, uh, how do we want to separate this? Like it is actually, first of all, it's a horizontal stack. Like we have something on the left hand side and on the right hand side. So it's a horizontal stack. Um, space, probably something like two. And then uh, let's just add a vertical stack as the first element. So this will be like the input fields. Uh, add something fields. And then the second element will be on the right side. It will actually be just a centered image, uh, which is pretty much, I think we can do this. This is actually the selected image. So we can use the source. Hey, didn't you add the image? Uh, no, of course you didn't. So let's add image to native base. There we go. And make sure everything looks nice. Uh, source should be our selected. Uh, alt value, uh, no, selected meme. Uh, and does this need like a key? Oh, well, anyway, this is already a good start. So we got fields and this selected image and the selected image should actually change. It's not changing because um, alt to image component. Yeah, I think we need to go one step back to the meme selector. And at some point we haven't added a key to an image or so. Is it in here? Oh no, we haven't added an, a tag in here. Uh, is this really the problem? I don't think that, I actually don't think that this is the problem. I think there's something else wrong, um, but we eventually gonna figure out. Um, so let's, I think we might have to use a key in here. I don't know why. But I think if the image is not updated, yeah, that was actually a bug I encountered before. So although this is not an iteration, uh, because we just replaced the selected in our state, to make sure that the image actually changes, we also need to give it the key. And now this already works, that's good. So we can focus uh, on the left side, we're gonna bring in the, uh, the, uh, the other stuff, <laughs> the form fields. Uh, probably add a bit of margin bottom. Yes, that's cool. And we probably want to uh, center this. And also for the first vertical stack for the fields, I want to give this a width of like 80% of the view. Um, are you mad with me? Why do you move this out so, so, uh, probably because it's a heading. Um, Let's see, we're gonna, we're gonna check this in a second. Let's just begin with a vertical stack. So we can do this with a form control from native base and then simply add an input field. I think this is from native base as well. Uh, placeholder, top text, uh, on change. We actually need to use on change text that makes life easier. And when it changes, we just call set top with that text. I feel like, uh, Oh, actually this was right. Uh, all the brackets are in place. Let's see. Yes, doesn't look great, but <laughs> it's in there. Um, so that's good. Uh, also between the fields here for the vertical stack, we also gonna give this a bit of space. 
and then we got our form control nice okay um then we can i think we can directly just put in the second one actually this should also be a form control element this will be bottom text and of course it should call set bottom instead and after that control actually we can hit save and should see the second field right um maybe we just give this a width of 60 maybe that's enough enough for today um and after the second uh, form control we also add a button from native base um on press we want to trigger the function to actually generate the meme um so let's create a new function uh, do create meme we don't really do anything in here yet um just a just a function itself so on press of that button we call do create meme uh the button should have like a decent size um i don't know let's try md and let's just see create meme what happens okay that's a good start uh, i think we might need a bit of padding here and there but overall that looks good uh i want to use a different color scheme for the button so let's use the color scheme secondary i don't know i actually went with a secondary color for for all the applications so uh, we're gonna go with this as well uh, the image is centered we got some padding here we probably want to give to the horizontal stack some kind of margin i don't know like two or four yeah probably something like this should work um okay we got the input fields we got our create meme button Actually, do we want to make it to center? No, I don't think we want to make this like this can be just like it is. So then we can enter some text and hit the create meme. That's good. Um, we could also add an icon, but oh, oh. well, why? <laughs> I think this is cool. Okay, so within do create meme, we got access to the top and the bottom text. Now it gets interesting. <clears throat> because usually at that point we would make a call to the api and we're gonna do make that call uh, sooner than later but for the beginning i want to do once again a dummy call so let's go back to our use api and let's create a new function uh, we're gonna call this one create meme actually this is copied pretty much from our previous code or from the previous tutorial so create meme gets the top text the bottom text the name of the meme and returns a promise although i don't see the brackets yeah there are brackets okay um and what we're going to do right now is we're going to actually return a promise just like we did in the other cases and what we do is we get <laughs> this random image here uh which i found in i don't know in some kind of tutorial <laughs> for jpeg yeah because in the end <clears throat> what we get back from uh from rapid api is going to be a blob so there will be some issues with this uh i'm going to try and set the uh, actually no actually i need to set the response type here oh the response type is already set to blob that's good i just haven't seen it so the response type is set to blob for our access get request and um this means we get back a blob and working with a blob in react native is somewhat challenging but we're going to see this uh in a second for now let's try and go back to our creator uh and we're going to add our new function create meme from the use api hook we haven't added this before so there we go okay uh while we create the meme i want to set the loading to true um so when we have a loading we probably we should probably display something for the loading um let's set loading to true in the beginning so then we pretty much just hide this view we could also show like an overlay uh what is available with a native base that's always a good question uh loading they have a progress well progress is not really what we need we really need like or maybe we could use like a spinner um that's actually pretty nice can we have like the spinner completely on top of the application huh that is a good question simon i don't see anything for this so let's go with the spinner 
I'm gonna copy this stack over, uh, stack over, <laughs> uh, and put it somewhere here. So if we're no, if we're loading, and and we're gonna display this stack. Uh, I can't find spinner. Please, just import everything from native base, please. Um, oh yeah, I'm back on that screen. Okay, yeah, we see the loading. That's okay. Uh, that just means we probably want to use a bit of margin. Okay, that's good. Space 2, justify content, accessibility, loading, meme. Uh, I want to use a different color for that spinner. Yeah, I can just use color. Can just say the color scheme once again? Like, there's always color and color scheme. What happens with secondary? Uh, not so much. Not so much. Let's go with color and secondary 500. Yeah, that changes. Okay, that changes the spinner. And then for the text, we're going to do the same. Yeah, then we got the same. Okay, we're going to say creating meme. Okay, so this happens when we load, so we don't see the form anymore. Uh, it's a bit jumping, but I think we're going to just keep it like it is. Um, we're going to set this back to false. So now when I hit create meme, it shows that we are creating the meme. Good. So let's call create meme with top text, bottom text, top, bottom, and meme is the selected. No, this is actually the selected name because selected is the selected image. So this is selected. Okay. Uh, maybe we're going to make this an asynchronous function equals await. Hello, no equals today for us. Okay, there we go. Uh, select. Um, yeah, okay, this is optional, but uh, selected name should be saved. We could also disable like the input, but yeah, on this screen, we always have selected. There's actually no way to not <laughs> select something. Uh, so let's say result, result. And at this point, it once again, I think it's gonna be more complicated at this point. Uh, can, we, can we reset that state? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to record this. This wasn't my intention. Creating meme. Okay. Uh, ooh, a lot of content result. La 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 application. Okay, I should probably have used like result dot data. Um, mm -mm. Yeah, but there's blob. We see response type blob. And there should be, yeah, there is some kind of data in here. That's okay, okay. All right, let's see if we can work with this. I think at this point, previously I encountered problems with Expo. So uh, let's see and take on this challenge. Oh. The idea is, <clears throat> once again, we're just faking this because from the API, we will get pretty much the same result. We got back a blob as well from the real API that we're gonna use. We want to present that result in a modal view, or we could just, uh, for uh, for testing, we're just gonna do it in here. So if we have a result, uh, we're gonna display uh, something, oops, let's put in this result, and then below we try to somehow display an image. Uh, we're giving it a source, uh, source of that image should be Yuri result. Um, I'll also give whatever uh, meme result. Uh, just for testing, we're gonna give this a width of 400 and a height of 200. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, not working anymore, that's great. Uh, because at this point, uh, adding the debugger <laughs> might be really handy because adding all the locks in here, it's actually pretty hard. So let's see. I'm gonna add debug remote. Um, oh, no, Expo Go wasn't happy about uh, debugging. <laughs> like all the time. Um, I don't know if Expo, I, I think there is a section in the Expo docs about remote debugging and stuff. So it certainly works. Uh, there we go. Everything looks fine. Text strings must be rendered within a text. Where do I have a text string? I don't even like... Is there any text string in here? <laughs> I don't see any. Uh, I have a, this 
No, there's no text in here. Should it be like this one? Text string must be rendered, create text instance. I sometimes really don't know what's your problem. Uh, exceptions manager. Because like the, the whole error message is not that helpful. Um, so scroll view, something scroll view, native base provider, theme provider, Epcon, like it's it's not really pointing me to the right direction where this error came up. Uh, and it's shown here somewhere. No, not really. Okay. Um, anyway, um, if we get the result, we should probably just call set result with my data here. Um, so we're gonna put in the lock anyway. We have do create meme result is actually your result is uh, we should probably set this to null in the beginning. Uh -huh. And then if we do have a result, uh, it would show text strings must be. I don't have any kind of text string in here anymore. I really don't know what this is about. Uh, I sometimes feel like I'm looking at the wrong stuff. Like, I don't know why, but sometimes this is just the feeling I get. I'm gonna try and reload. But whenever I plug in my remote debugging, I get these kind of problems. Like, we haven't had this problem before. I can, let's, for testing, I'm gonna disable the remote debugging, stop remote debugging, and I'm gonna use the application as is. Okay, text strings must be right now. I don't have any text strings. Please, where is my text string? Result and this is, there is no text string. Is it creating meme? Um, oh, where did I, oh, I, oh, I went into the stack. That's interesting. Uh, I definitely didn't want to go into that stack. Anyway, uh, let's hit the reload again. Uh, let's see, you're, you're, you're happy with this as well? I think we made a mistake at some other point, but error is located at scroll view. Like, is it this part here? This is the only thing we actually change right now. Yeah, if I remove this, it works. Hmm. Interesting. So probably you're not happy um, about not having anything in here. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna add a modal anyway now. Um, because I wanted to show you that it's actually pretty easy to open a modal. Do we have like a modal state? No, I don't think we have so. Um, but that's gonna be easier to present our result in. So show modal and set show modal. Um, actually, after we get the result, we can probably call this and set it to true. And at the same time, set loading to false. So a bunch of things once we get back a result here. So then we can make this model dependent uh, or check if it should be open based on show model. Uh, model. And on close, we can now easily uh, call the function directly. So we can call set show model to false. Um, we can also define a size if we want to. Uh, let's make this a large one full. I don't want to have full. I want to get LG. That should be cool. Then within that, um, following the uh, super base, no, native base, <laughs> so many bases, uh, we need uh, whatever. We can have a footer, a header, a body. Um, I'm going to go with modal content first of all. And within that content, we can have a close button. So this is like the standard setup. Uh, that should display a close button at the top right. Um, what am I actually doing? What am I looking at? <laughs> um, I'm not exactly sure, but I think I see something. I, I think this was the overlay. Uh, I'm gonna give this a maximum width. Uh, max width. Actually, that was max V. That should have been fine as well. But we need some kind of modal body. That's important because this is where we can actually display the information. Um, what do we want to present in there? Um, we're definitely going to have a footer as well. So we're going to have modal.footer and within there we're going to put a button and that button <clears throat> uh, should call on press function so we can download the image. That's going to be interesting, by the way. Uh, it's actually going to be more than interesting. It's going to be <laughs> highly challenging. Uh, we're going to 
somehow figure this out together with or without Expo. We're gonna see. Okay, this is gonna call start download. We're gonna call this download button. Yeah, of course, no import. Thanks for that. Button, of course, comes from here. And there we go. Oh, we do have button. Like, why do you complain if we already have the button? Come on. I'm actually gonna comment the call out for a second here. Uh, that should work easily. Um, JSX closing tag for button. Yeah, I do expect that as well. So now when I click create meme, okay, it presents this. This is good. This is progress. Uh, now I can make the button take up the whole space by saying flex one. And do we want to keep the color scheme here? Yeah, let's just let's just roll with that color. Mm. We should give this um, a header as well. So we can define all of this on the modal. This is actually pretty pretty easy and cool. I'm gonna call this your meme. And then in between here in the center, we will render the image. Um, do we need, I think in my example, I added a little V stack in here, but I'm not completely sure. I don't think we, I actually don't think we need this stack. Um, the only thing is that we need the image in here based on our Yuri result. So let's try, why is this breaking the application? Did this just break it? That would have been interesting, let's see. Going to our selector, I'm gonna click create meme. It's creating the meme possible unhandled promise rejection. Uh, um, probably because we don't even have anything for the image. Uh, oh, is that really the case? Let's see, let's see. We're gonna add this as well again. Uh, now we are stuck in that uh, loading phase once again. I'm so happy that we can easily <laughs> open the developer tools. Okay, let's go there. Create meme, creating meme. It takes a second. Okay, image view. Yuri, blah, blah, blah. Uh, see more. I think these error messages are horror. Like it's so hard to figure out what's the, the real deal here. Um, but I'm pretty sure the, the problem is that we can't directly display base 64. That is usually at the, at the core. So what we get back here is a meme blob. Um, and I found a little snippet on the internet to actually use a file reader instance. So that should somehow solve this problem. So we can create a file reader then read our meme blob data as data URL. And then we can call or implement the file reader instance on load. And in here, get the base64 data and set our result to the base64 data instead. And then we can also, the loading can be set to false here. And we got the model in there. So I don't know if this will work and I expect actually expect that it's not working uh, but let's see okay we got once again get the possible unhandled promise rejection and at this point it gets really 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 ugly like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say we have the result at this point and I'm gonna put a lock in the onload here so that means Technically, when we click on create meme, uh, we should see the lock that we got a result. And then we should at some point see on load. Let's see, create meme, I uh, get the lock result and I get the lock on load and it works. <laughs> uh, funny, just when, when you were prepared to explain the issue and why it's not working and then it's complicated, exactly in that moment, it, it just works. <laughs> Uh, Expo, why you do this to me? Well, turns out everything went better than expected. <laughs> okay, that means also uh, we can finally, like if this works, we can also um, show how this works with the real API, uh, just to see some interaction with the real API as well. So, instead of making our fake call and get that static file, 
we're gonna now exchange this for the call to the meme generator API that I've shown you before here on Rapid API. To use it, you just need to create an account and then subscribe to one of the APIs and you get your uh, X Rapid API key that you can use and then the host, which is the endpoint. Again, I'm using response type blob, just like we did in our fake example. Um, and I'm also passing in the params top, bottom and meme. So let's hit save on this. Uh, hit save on this and I don't want to hit save on this here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and let's see, can we, are we ready for a real test? I think. Okay. So, uh, Bernie, yeah, uh, what is this meme? I, uh, what is the question I ask you once again to learn cross platform? Create meme, creating meme. I'm so excited if this works. I ask you once again to learn cross play. Nice, nice, nice. It works. <laughs> oh, cool. And this is the cool thing about Rapid API as well. You can have multiple different APIs like uh, a Reddit trending uh, API, a meme generator API, and they can easily be included in one project. And you don't need to work with a lot of different things. There's just one rapid API key. You can restrict this, of course, and make it a bit more secure. Um, for example, based on the application ID, the domain or something. But overall, this is pretty cool. You could use tons of other APIs now as well if you wanted to. Because I don't want to blow up my quota at this point, I'm gonna comment this out for a second again and instead go with this solution once again. Because the next step is gonna be quite complicated. Um, what we need right now is, uh, we're gonna remove, mm, I'm gonna keep, uh, yeah, we're gonna keep this. Um, I want to download this image now and we do have a function to start the download right here, but we don't have access to the camera roll as far as I know. Uh, we can do like it changes daily with some API. So let's try expo access camera roll. Is there a package like this? Yeah and no, I don't think so. Um, pick camera constants, what is this? Go away. Uh, permissions, ask for permissions. Yeah, we can pick something from the gallery uh, launch image library asynchronous, uh, but this is only like getting us files from the image library. What I want to do is I want to write to the uh, image library. Is there a way to do this with image picker in app launches? Uh, locally, what, what's it, what do I call this? Camera roll, right? Uh, you can install the Expo camera web support. Okay, API camera. What is included, barcode settings, face detect, flash mode, picture. No, this is, I want to have the functions. Use camera permissions method, get camera, get request. No, I don't think there is the way to take a picture, but we certainly don't want to take a picture. The only thing we want to do is we want to write. We also don't want to pick an image. Um, yeah, photo permissions, launch array, I think, allows editing, uh, set image, result, Yuri. No, I, I don't think. Get camera roll permission, get launch camera request. Per it's actually a pity uh, because what we have to do at this point is to install uh, another plugin. Um, this is called React Native. Uh, camera roll. However, if you go with a plugin like this, um, it won't work with Expo anymore, as far as I understand and as far as I uh, noticed. Because right now, if we check out the project, we also don't have any native project or native permissions. So at this point, it's probably time to opt out of um, Expo, no matter if this is uh, maybe even available with Expo, but I want to show you um, how we could do this. Before we do this, uh, I want to do one more thing because that is actually so easy. If you check out the assets folder, you're going to see we have an icon and we have a splash screen. And I'm not going to add two files here to replace. Hello, please. just <laughs> I'm going to replace the icon with my own icon and <laughs> with my own splash screen. 
and I want to see if I'm somehow able to use that icon. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to close this. Uh, what are the commands we got for Expo? Like, well, Expo start, right? Um, this should probably automatically include our assets because we have an app.json file with Expo and in there uh, we have defined the splash image and also the um, Android adaptive icon. I, oh, I'm gonna bring in an adaptive <laughs> adaptive icon. I don't really have the adaptive icon. It's just gonna be the same icon again. Um, where, 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 where's my app JSON? Uh, so for the web, I'm not gonna change this. For Android, we have this. Actually, we could use uh, our own background color. Uh, let's do this. Let's make sure that we got the right background color. Digital color meter. Picking that color I, because I don't know the value. Copy color as text and putting it into here. So now we also got the right background color for the splash and the adaptive icon. Okay. Okay. So I think at this point the icon should be updated. How can we leave the application? Um, go home. Yeah, we actually do have it. Nice. The icon was automatically updated, uh, but it's not really showing like, how can we do a full reload? Um, uh, we will all, oh, there's the splash screen. Nice. <laughs> splash screen. And if we leave the application, um, go home and we actually already see it in here. Okay, cool. Because if we eject Ape, uh, Expo at that point, it becomes harder to set the icons. <laughs> well, I wanted to do this up front. So we also have a splash screen and an app icon now. Cool. So now the only thing is we want to finally download our uh, image because everything else is actually working. We got all the navigation, the logic in here, the selection, the input fields. Uh, we got the modal in place. So I think we actually got, uh, I think we got actually everything else that we need. Um, uh, so there's just like one more line that we need. Uh, for now, I'm gonna go to the creator and also add a little toast because there's also a toast that we can use with uh, native base. So I'm gonna say const toast equals, they have some, some cool hooks uh, like this one and the toast hook is pretty easy. So therefore let's go into start download. Um, so we're gonna do some kind of magic in here. Uh, and at some point we're going to set the modal to false and uh, call toast.show with a little text uh, description meme saved. So this will be the ultimate goal. What the, did this just change the view? I don't know. That was crazy. Um, I think we're using the fake API, right? Okay, and I'll click download, it closes, and I don't know if you've seen this. Oh, now I've made it full screen. <laughs> it has, uh, it, this was the toast. So, how can we save to camera roll? Well, let's eject Expo and install another package because we like to be dangerous. Um, I think, first of all, we should just call Expo eject. Probably I'm gonna break everything now, that can happen. <laughs> Uh, but otherwise, it actually shouldn't be too hard to do this. Like, we should be able to figure this out somehow. So, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Would you like to proceed? Yes. Android package. Would you like your Android package name? So now I can define the actual native... Oh, I should, shouldn't do this. Uh, the actual native settings. So I'm going to leave this to the defaults. Um, com super simon meme creator. Um, creating native project. What did I just do? It's cleaning up, it's installing JavaScript dependencies. Why, what, what kind of dependencies are you installing? Like I just know it, I think it removes a lot of things and everything turns red once you run expo eject. Um, it will create this index.js. I think we didn't have this one before. Uh, we still have the metro config or do we have the metro config before? I actually don't know. It will also leave all the scripts in here. Um, it installs Cocoa Pods. That's good because now we need to 
uh, manually take care of it. And now we also see we have an iOS folder and an Android folder, which means we now have the native project. Um, the, the funny thing is I can still run npm run iOS. Um, and if I check my package JSON, this will still use Expo to run my application. Um, so I'm not sure like <laughs> what exactly we, we ejected. Like I see that we now got the iOS folder, the Android folder, and I got full control over my own project. But if I now run npm run um, probably Expo, probably Expo run iOS is now proxying to something else because usually you would now go ahead and use something like the react native cli and you would call react native run ios this is what i would expect after rejecting expo however um it's still compiling something so let me give this a minute and see what happens okay actually it took less than a minute it wants to open the meme creator and it installed this. So although it's still called Expo, it is now creating a native application. I assume it is using under the hood React Native Run uh, iOS. So everything else is still working and we have our own application. That didn't hurt so much, right? Expo eject, it was actually pretty easy, right? Uh, let's see, I don't wanna be too optimistic upfront because now we also still need to install our plugin. So let's do this. npm install add react native camera roll camera roll. This is gonna be fun. For iOS, no, I'm not doing the manual installation. Our react native link should run automatically. So that at least works. Uh, I don't need to migrate. I need permissions. This is definitely something I need. So in the iOS project, you can have certain permissions. Actually, you can have them for Android as well, and we're gonna also do this. And those are under iOS. Do we wanna do it in here, or do you wanna see Xcode? Uh, I can show you both. So in our meme creator, we got the iOS project and we got the XC workspace. If we open up that workspace, this is a native Xcode project now just like you would have if you had used uh, React Native in the first place without Expo. So here you can all define all the signing capabilities and the settings. And under mm, mm, info, you find the info plist. And I don't really like this representation, so I usually dive into it from here, meme info plist. And then I'm just gonna add the keys that I want towards the end. So what I need is, the NS photo library usage at description and library usage description. This is also exactly what we can find here and here. For Android, we need those two permissions uh, and they go into the Android uh, manifest file. So let's find this file. Uh, we're gonna save this already. Uh, probably we need to, oh, if we, like main changes to the iOS P list. I don't know, are you gonna work this out? Eh, we're gonna see. It will crash anyway if it's not working. So for Android, app, source, main, Android manifest, and then find, um, how are your, what is this? Why, what is it and why is it in there? Um, but interesting, we got everything already in here for the permissions. I wonder how this is possible. Or do we, like, we have this. Ha, huh. this is crazy. Also add request uh, storage attribute on the application tag. Do we also have this? Uh, here's the application tag. Uh, string Android icon, Android icon, theme uses clear text. No, it doesn't have the request legacy external storage. So we're gonna add this to it. Yeah, there's still like Expo stuff in here. I don't know if this should be gone. Like it feels crazy to have it in here anyway. Uh, but let's see. So there's actually just one, I think one or two lines we need from this plugin to make it work. Um, so camera roll save. This is what we want from the camera roll plugin. 
So let's go back to our the creator. I'm gonna add camera roll in here. And in our save function, we're gonna call camera roll dot save. This is the new function. Uh, tech is actually the image, um, I think at least. Um, that should, should be the case, right? And do we need anything else? Let's check the save. Tech, I think the rest is actually optional. Yeah, tech required, see above. Uh, on Android, tech must be a local image or a video URI. On iOS, tech can be any image. Okay, cool. So let's just save the result. <laughs> let's just <laughs> let's just do this. Um, this is probably in a synchronous call to that plugin. Um, so let's make this yeah async await, and then we close the model and show a toast. What could possibly go wrong? Let's give this a try. I'm so excited because I'm yeah. I don't know. I just wanna. I just want to start it again. I, I don't feel good about, um, but every time I run npm run iOS, it's probably like doing a real native build with Cocoa Pods and stuff. But yeah, since we added that native plugin, we anyway need to update our Cocoa Pods uh, and install something uh, for uh, this camera plugin. So I think this is actually required. With Expo, you of course have the Expo uh, application. And if you have the Expo application, um, this already has all the plugins and stuff implemented. So let's see. Um, create meme. This should give us a fake image. I'm gonna hit download. Oh, it wants to add something to my images. This is a good sign. I'm gonna say, okay, and meme saved. Let's see if we can confirm this. Um, yes, there we go. It is, I think it is this. This is from the testing. Let's do, let's do one with a real, real API. So then I can confirm and show you that it is really like the real deal. So let's go back to use API. We're gonna comment this one out and this one in. And this is Simon final test number something. Uh, I can also comment this in, but anyway, it shows the same result. We have our uh, meme creator right here. We're gonna select something or maybe we change it to bad luck Brian. Um, uses Flutter React Native wins. <laughs> okay, exactly the output. We're gonna download it, and hopefully it is saved to our files. I'm the happiest person right now, because actually everything that we wanted to achieve works. We've been able to use the Rapid APIs to generate exactly this image with our text and save it to our device using this pretty cool meme generator. So if you enjoyed it, um, go create uh, some cool memes and post them right in the comments. All right, and that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this, well, kind of long introduction to React Native and building your first application because it covered actually everything that you need to get started. Based on Expo, we had the uh, native-based UI components, we had the navigation, so they're pretty much everything, all the components included for you to build your application. Also, in the end, you saw how we can easily eject Expo in case you don't want it. You can also start your application directly without it and just use uh, React Native CLI. There's not a big difference, but you should just know that you can do or take this step at any point. If you enjoyed the video, please also check out the links below to Rapid API to support this channel. And of course, make sure you stay subscribed for all the future videos coming pretty soon. If you want to check out the uh, source code, once again, link below the video to GitHub where you can find all the repositories and I will hopefully catch you inside the next video. So until then, as always, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>